GTA 6. Delayed, delayed, delayed. You get the point. You know what's not delayed? Gemini 3. It launched today, and we're going to use Gemini to create Grand Theft Auto. So let's get started. We have a tab here, and we're going to say, I want a nice menu screen, and then create a game inspired by Grand Theft Auto. You should be able to get in and out of cars, and or walk around. Make it a Miami feeling. And we're going to hit Submit. This is the new Gemini 3 model, and if you're not aware, the Gemini 3 model is destroying benchmarks. So you can kind of read through the blog post here, which I will have a link in the description below, but you can actually see the different benchmarks here. I'm just going to like zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit easier. And you can see Humanity's Last Exam. You can see Gemini 3 Pro, and this is without tools. This is with search and code execution. It scores up to 45.8%, and the next highest is 26.5%. And this is a very hard challenge, a really hard test for AI. And if we keep going through the list, you're going to notice that it scores really high in everything. Math, physics, coding, it doesn't matter. You throw it at it. It does a very good job. It is ahead is some of it's like just by like points. Others is ahead by a lot, by like a landslide. The only one is the SWE benchmark, which is for agentic coding, but it scores very close to Claude. So it's like neck and neck. But if you notice the jump from Gemini 2.5 or the 2 series to Gemini 3 is massive. But these are just benchmarks which can be gamed. The question is, is how do they work in real world testing? And if we come to the Franklin A website, I actually have a code test that I do for all the different models. So if you go to more, there's AI code test, and we're going to run all of these tests in this video. But also, we're going to see if we can keep coding back and forth, keep prompting our model, keep prompting Gemini 3 to create a Vice City game. And we can see here we have Vice City Drift. Now let me move myself out of the way so you can see. This is the first iteration. This is from one prompt, which is kind of wild already. We have a nice menu. I like the colors. It looks cool. So we can enter cars with F and to break. Okay. So listen, I never said to make it 3D, but hey, listen, this is pretty cool, right? It's not bad. Uh, can we kill this? Let's try getting in a car so we can get in a car. Ooh, it has headlights and it spins around. Okay, so we're making good progress. I think this is cool. Let's try to tell it now. So make it 3D or appear as if it's 3D. So we're going to let that run and we're going to come back and forth throughout this video. Let's try our first code test. We have Angry Birds here. And the way this works is if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis, but I have this prompt here. So it gives us a prompt about Angry Birds. I'm just going to copy it over. We're going to get it going. And I am using the thinking model for all of these. So maybe I'll jot that in somewhere. But on this code test here, you can see the prompt. We can see code. And you can actually use the drop down and you can see all the different code for different models. So if you want to see what Gemini 2.5 Pro did on this date, you can actually see the code for that Gemini 2.5 Pro way back when I did the test. And you can go to preview and you can see angry shapes way back when, and you can see what it looked like and how it worked. So you can do this for any of the models. So if you want to see what Claude Sonic 4.5 recently did, we can see that. And Claude 4.5 Sonic, if I remember correctly, it was a little bit broken. But anyway, you can see what Angry Birds look like. And let's go see what Angry Birds looks like now with 3.0. And this is called Furious Fowl. So the fowl is angry. The birds are angry. And I'm just going to keep jumping back and forth. Okay. Apparently, apparently, it switched from a 2D canvas to using 3.js. And it's funny because when we do the GTA test later in this video, because I have that on here on this list, I'm going to be telling it to use 3.js. This time around, I don't want to tell it. I just want to see what it's able to do. And it also has physics so and lighting. So let's see what it looks like. All right, uh, this is wild. It says we're downtown. It says we're on foot. So it kind of tells you all that. It can't move the cursor around. I feel like I want to do that next, but this is already really cool. So we connect with the car. This is awesome. It looks amazing. The lights look really good. 
So a couple more prompts, and I think we can start building something that's pretty good. So normally I wouldn't prompt AI to do all this in one go because it's just way too much, but I really want to try Gemini 3 and see if it's capable. So our prompt is, hey, make the cars faster, allow the user to use their mouse to move around at actual streets. And let me just adjust that. I know how to spell sidewalks, street lights, and make the cars drive around following the road rules. Ensure there is daytime and nighttime cycle. So let's hit submit. Let's see if it's able to take all of that in and pull it off. All right, the Angry Birds test. And we can see here, we can hit play and we have a level selector and unfortunately we can select any level even though we didn't complete the prior level so that's something that the old gemini did for this exact prompt but it's already starting to look a lot better and wow okay this is cool Ooh, the slingshot's really really cool look at that you can actually kind of see it right and how well does it work can we do this all right that was beginner's luck clearly we have three stars score 500 uh where is our pig there's no, there's no pig on this level. It says it's one. Where is it? Pig? Okay, so there's no pig on this level. Let's try the next or just another random level. So it does look really good. The pig actually like kind of explodes, which is kind of cool. The level completion screen's not popping up. Apparently there's another pig on here somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Let's try level 10. Uh... All right, well, listen, Angry Birds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the code from here. I'm going to copy it all over and I'm going to put it on the website. So you're going to be able to see this in the model list and you're going to have a point in history. So let's go check out our GTA game and then we're going to go back and try another code test. So let's see if it is better. Apparently it has updated and let's see what it's done. A city grid system, mouse look around, day night, traffic with AI and physics. That's a lot all in one go. So we can try Try it out here we can hit play and we can see we have the ability to move around now cars are able to run us over we can still see we're on foot in the top right it tells you the time so there's like an am and all that so let me see i jumped in a car but i still can't move so i need the ability to move around let's give that in as a prompt and hopefully this fixes it while that is working let's come back here and let's try the next one this time around we're doing this large prompt here which is minecraft and for each of these prompts i really want to try like different things so that's the whole premise of this video or these videos in general i always try to give prompts some are like really detailed and give exact instructions and others are just more like open and to see what the model can do. So just like before, I just want to show you some like previews. This is Sonnet 4.5 and what it was able to do. It worked really well, but it was also super laggy and you can see I'm actually like under the ground. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, and I, you can see I've done this test quite a bit, the best model was like either Perplexity Labs I, I believe Perplexity Labs was really good, if I remember correctly. So we're going to see it. So this was Perplexity Labs, and yeah, it was, like, really smooth. Like, you can see, it's really quick, and the world is generating as you go. So you can also, like, select a different block, and then pick and select, throw it down that block. So that was, like, a really good model, uh, which is crazy, because it's, like, Perplexity Labs. If you want to see Gemini 2.5 Pro... We can see that one as well. This one was really good, but again, a little bit slow. But you can see this was like the same exact prompt we're about to try with Gemini 3. This is what we're able to accomplish. So let's come back here and we can see here it is coding. And is it done? Nope, it is not done. So we'll be back in just a second when this is finished. Oh, I spoke too soon. It is done. All right. No editing for me. So, all right, start world. And it's very dark and I cannot move around. So I feel like Gemini 2.5 was better for this individual prompt. I'm going to only ever add the code for the first initial prompt. This is really smooth, by the way. Like it is really fast. I feel like with one extra like prompt on top, we can make this like really, really good. But for the sake of these code tests, it is one single prompt. What is it able to do? So this is the version we have. In the background, I'm updating the GTA game and I'm just adding more tweaks and improvements. I'm going to show you the updated version shortly, but I just want to remind you to subscribe and cover AI on a daily basis. All right, up next, we have subway servers here, but with cars. So we're going to copy this prompt. We're going to come back here. We're going to hit paste and submit. So we can see subway servers with cars. We can see the preview. This is Claude 4.5 Sonnet, which was an error. We can see what Gemini 2.5 Pro has done. and 
we can see this one here. It was the keypad that we can go back and forth and eventually we go off the map. Then we have GPT-5 and you can see this version here, which looked really cool, but you're like floating in the sky. I don't know exactly what was going on here, but it was kind of weird. So anyway, let's see what Gemini gives us. This one is called Highway Horizon. All right, so this is my first time looking at this game with you. We're going to hit Start Engine and we can use the left or right arrows or A and D to move. So let's see how well. OK. Uh, it looks really cool, but and here's the big but it's not very functional. Does that make sense? Like I can, I can't really move left or right. And again, I feel like we're like a prompt away from making this really, really cool. But currently as it stands, you can't really control the car. So you can see like I'm moving. I feel like I'm not really doing anything. It's just kind of going back and forth. It's swaying graphically the best model without a doubt. This is the best looking one. And it's like the closest to having something that's really cool and functional in one prompt. But I feel like we need that second prompt to just, just really fine tune it and make this game like really great. But hey, this is how the coding challenge works. So copy this over and put it on the website. Meanwhile, I got to tell you, the Vice City Drift 3D is starting to really polish up. It looks amazing. I'm going to have that towards the end of the video. So let's continue forward. What's next after Subway Surfers? But with cars, we have Sonic. And this test has always been actually like a lot of fun because we've gotten a huge range of responses from the models. So again, you can see the code for any of these. We can see the preview. We can see Claude, which was like a failure. I want to show you Gemini 2.5 Pro. This one was actually pretty cool. I think this was like one of my favorites so far. And again, this is like a very old model. Okay, so we can see Gemini. We can go Claude 4. You can see what that looked like. It was just kind of weird. It was just this little guy here. You have to move the arrows, arrows going back and forth. You can use space to jump, and this was pretty much the game. We can kind of go forward, Perplexity Labs. You can see it just says complete a level, and we can't really do anything. GPT-5, which looked actually really cool now that I remember. So you just kind of have to like jump over everything as you went along. But there was no real ending, if I remember correctly. There was like a door, but you couldn't do anything. And if you hit something, your rings would pop out. So there's this door, but that was like the end of the, the game. We also have Claude Sonnet 4.5. And Claude Sonnet 4.5 was just like glitched out and aired from what I remember. So it just didn't really work. It was just glitchy. So you can see what we're working with and what we're going against. So let's come here. We have blue blur. Okay. And this is one prompt. Okay. The rings look phenomenal, right? Can we all agree? The rings are really, really cool. And we can see how many rings we've collected. It is very hard. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's last one. I'm not bad at games. They just made it exceptionally hard. So let's see. Wow. Okay, he, he flies through the screen. Let's see if I can actually get somewhere. Or if there's an, oh, there's a flag. Okay, so you can see there's an actual endpoint, And then when you finish the game, it just respawns a whole new level because every level is different. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I think this might be the first ever functional Sonic game on the channel out of all the code tests. Uh, we'll use that loosely. I mean, you can collect rings. You can see I'm collecting all the rings here and he is flying. Again, I feel like this is a functional game, but we're like one prompt away. So here, watch, I'll get it. Now we start over a brand new level. It is a functional game, but I feel like we're again, one prompt away where I can like modify it and say, hey, slow Sonic down, make him speed up, show how many rings you collect total lifetime. But in terms of Sonic and this prompt here, which was like a really simple prompt, by far the best Sonic game to date. All right, so we also have a GTA test, and don't be confused, this is different than the one we are running on this tab here. So that's just a little teaser. This is just like a single prompt. I want to see what that looks like versus me prompting it over and over and over again. And similar to before, I just want to show you the different versions that exist that worked. So this is Claude 2.5 Pro, and 2.5 Pro does work well. I feel like it just, you need a good spawn, and I know the might seem cherry pick ish, but 
nonetheless, here we go. That'll work. So you can kind of see what Gemini 2.5 Pro did. You can move around. You can like jump into the buildings. I remember this one being really good and clean and smooth. And then we can actually run up to this car here, which we are running faster than the car is moving. And we can like enter the car with E. Here we go. And now we can move and drive into our car right off the screen. So this was 2.5 Pro. We can also, again, go through Minimax Agent, which was really cool. You can see it here. You can see all like the statuses. We can enter cars and do all sorts of stuff. Graphically, it looks really nice, but functionality was lacking. GPT-5 Pro, and or sorry, just GPT-5. You can kind of see it here. It is like flipped. This one looks kind of cool. It's very dark. The cars look okay. You can kind of see what we're working with here. So let's go check out what Gemini has been cooking for us. This is called Block City Auto. And again, this is just the single prompt version, different than the one I am working on. And we have an error. We have an error. So technically, the code is broken, and that's what's going to go on the website. However, I do want to see if it can fix the error, and let's see what it actually looks like. So you can see here what we have created. This is the GTA game off of one prompt, but with like one just like fix your code error, and you can kind of see the guy is in the ground, but overall, it looks really cool. You can kind of like jump around. You can see the little park. The buildings look phenomenal. This is probably by far the best model. It is very, very smooth. We can like kind of do everything. Can we enter a car though? That's the real question. Come back here, car. The cars go slightly too fast. Is there one coming to work? Oh, here we go. All right, I got in. So we are in the car now and we can kind of see the car moves very slow when I'm driving it for some reason, but it is super fast when other people are driving it. Can I, can I go faster? Nonetheless, this is a really cool looking game. But now it is time for my GTA that I've been prompting back and forth. All right, you can see here we have Vice City Ultimate Drift. We can see all the controls here. WSD to walk or drive, F to enter a car, space to jump and break, and mouse to look around. So we can hit play. We can just kind of move and jump around. And this is what the game looks like so far. You can see we have streetlights up on the top. We have people walking around. We have bushes and trees, and we have even little sidewalks. We can't walk in to the buildings because the buildings have like collision detection, and we can see some cars here. The cars are a little bit funky, but we're going to get in this car here. We're going to press F to get in, and we can drive a little faster. There are different car types that you can drive. If we keep going to any of the outer part of the map, we are entering the beach-ish area. Don't know what happened to the water, but hey, this is the beach, and we have like palm trees and little beach stuff going on, but you'll also notice that we have miles per hour in the top right, and we also have stars. So let me show you that we can get some stars, and the way this works is once we get stars, there will be some cops coming after us, and if they touch us, we lose, we are busted. And if we get away, then we can kind of continue. And I say this, oh, here's, here's the bus. Check this out. <laughs> we just got out of that one and just like started driving around. So there's the bus. Uh, it, the front of the bus is this way. So this is like pretty cool that it was able to do all this. But anyway, watch this. Ready? There's the pedestrian. Wait, it's, there it is. You see, that was way too fast. The police came flying in. All right. Just, there's like, whoosh, so we have to slow down the police a little bit just because they're a little bit overpowered right now. And also the time in the top left is a little messed up. And that person just walked through the building. But you can see that nighttime actually works. And when nighttime comes on, the streetlights change. The game is actually really, really cool, all considering. And basically the whole point is you can get in cars, you can explode people. They have like the little explosion animation. And once you do that, you have to evade the police. So there's the explosion. We got one star. The cops are coming after us and we are busted. So I'm going to leave a link to this. We're going to leave a link in the description below. You guys can click and check this out and expand on it yourself. I think Gemini 3 is the absolute best coder right now. They've also released something called Google Anti-Gravity, which I will have a video on in the near-ish future. So if you want to check that out, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Like the video, tells algorithm, hey, enjoy this type of content, want to see more of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.